The Your Mark on the World show is made possible by our sponsors, including ACLA Impact, Seed Equity Ventures, and Clean Energy Advisors. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. We're producing this episode for GoodCrowd.info, and our guests today are Oliver Thornton, who is the CEO and founder of uh, Coding Autism, and uh, his partner and co-founder, Austin Weinhardt, who is the Chief Operating Officer. Austin and uh, uh, <laughs> Oliver, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, I apologize for my bad memory. Uh, someday when you're old, you'll appreciate what this is like. <laughs> but uh, we're thrilled to have you. You guys are uh, right now in the middle of a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for your effort. Uh, uh, give us a quick update. Absolutely. So we are over 35% of our, of our goal of reaching $50,000 as a minimum to raise for our first web development immersive program. The idea is that we will take 15 adults on the autism spectrum and we will, put, and we're going to organize a class which is going to be full time, nine to five, five days a week, teaching them all the fundamental skills they need to learn to get an entry level web developer position. So they need to have no prior coding knowledge at all. Yeah. And then we also focus on a lot of soft skills such as interview preparation, and as well as Scrum principles, and just te- making sure that not only do they have the technical knowledge, but also the soft skills to succeed in a workplace. That's great. You know, I was just walking by the uh, city hall. We call it city and county building here in Salt Lake City, even though there are almost no county offices in the city and county building. It's the city hall. Uh, And out in front today, they had uh, 16,000 little blue flags uh, posted in the lawn. And each flag represents one person in Utah with autism. I think Utah has the highest rate of autism in the country. Uh, wow, it's incredible. Which may have something to do with having the highest birth rate in the country, and because autism is a relatively new thing. It's more prevalent today, right? I'm, I'm not an expert on these things, but more prevalent today than it was a generation ago, right? The part of that is also that it's being diagnosed a lot better today than it, than it used to be. I see. I mean, back in the, in the day, uh, autistic people were mi- a lot of times misdiagnosed as being schizophrenic and put in institutions when really they just had communication barriers. Yeah. Um, and right now the statistics are showing as high as one in 68 children are now diagnosed with autism in the U.S. Yeah. yeah also, also, 1994 is kind of like the flagship year as to when autism was defined as this wide spectrum. Prior to then, uh, a lot of people who perceived autism they thought of it as the worst that you can think of for autism, but that year was the year that like Hans Asperger came in place, and that's where they defined Asperger syndrome. That's the high functioning autism. I myself have Asperger syndrome, but that year was kind of the kickoff point as to when a lot of parents were more aware of autism and realizing that it was this wide spectrum, they were more inclined to take their children in to go get diagnoses. So when you're seeing yeah. rates from six to 15% year over year of autism prevalence increasing, it's not necessarily because there's um, things going on in our environment, whether it's vaccinations or climate control or anything like that. It's just that simply prior to that point, a lot of people were just not going in to get the diagnosis because they simply didn't know that it existed on this wide spectrum. So what's interesting about it is that you look at people who are in their 30s, their 40s, and their 50s, and there's so many people, especially if you even look at like Silicon Valley, for example, and their tech employees, that they have no clue that they're on the autism spectrum and that in fact they were misdiagnosed or they were just simply not diagnosed at all because they didn't go follow through with those procedures early on in their life. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, I, we all know a few people that we, we all, uh, I suspect, wonder about that are in that older generation that uh, never did get a diagnosis, but that uh, have some of the things we at least stereotypically think of as being part of the Asperger's or autism spectrum kinds of behaviors. So clearly uh, there are a number of people who are have tremendous capacity for 
learning these skills and performing well. Uh, but I suspect some of them weren't getting the education they need in traditional programs. That's where you come in, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, just like, I mean, growing up, I went to public school my entire life. I went through an IEP program. Although I did have support growing up that helped me guide it into the right direction, especially if you look at adults, 22 is kind of the year where uh, a lot of people in terms of governmental programs and services drop off. It's I, the IDEA Act ends at 22 years old and you kind of get put in this situation where it's like, okay, congratulations, you turned 22. Now you're in the real world, best of luck to you. And although there are nonprofits and there are companies out there that do help, they help to a certain degree. And when it comes to employment, you look at the autism unemployment and underemployment rates, which is about 85%. It's a very alarming number. So if you look at almost nine out of 10 adults in the autism spectrum, if they have a job, it's typically in a job, say as your typical Starbucks barista or an Uber driver or a grocery bagger. But those, uh, those nonprofits, those companies, they aren't training from step A to step Z adults in the spectrum and the skill sets that uh, allow them to be promising and highly qualified and desired employees for high growth career positions. So that's where coding autism comes in is that we provide that framework from instruction to advocacy and to mentorship to ensure that we get adults on the autism spectrum to that point. Yeah, it's kind of a, a little bit in vogue these days to be looking for ways to help uh, train an employee uh, people uh, on the autism spectrum, but uh, certainly there is room for more because this is, as you point out, uh, a really fast-growing crisis with 85% of, of uh, unemployment among people with autism. So big, big, big opportunity for you guys. Uh, so uh, Austin, what's your connection to this? Uh, we, we've talked a little bit about uh, Oliver's connection to autism. What's yours? Well, I've known Oliver and his brother since birth. I mean, our parents were friends before, since before we were born. Um, so I've always had like people with autism in my life growing up. I have family members that are on the spectrum who prefer not to be named. But um, yeah, I've, I've been in that environment a lot. Um, I myself went through a coding boot camp similar to the one we're trying to create. Um, you know, I started out in a PR marketing type of role and eventually transitioned into like a software development role. So I've seen firsthand, you know, how you can, you can within the span of three months, secure an entry level software role with the right mindset and training. And I think there's a lot of strengths in that model that we can apply that to people on, who, on, with the, on the autism spectrum. It really is a really powerful mindset shift for the world, right? For, for everyone who is looking for a job to think about 90 days of intensive study gets me on a whole new career path, a career path that's pretty darn relevant in 2017. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And whether you're, you know, on the autism spectrum or not, and it's great to see the kinds of programs that you went through, and now to see you guys applying that to uh, uh, people for, in the autism community, I think that's uh, great. Now, uh, Austin, you kind of hinted that, Oliver, you have a brother that is uh, also uh, diagnosed with autism. Is that right? That is correct. And how old is he? He's 25. He's one year older than I am. Okay. And is he a candidate for your program? He definitely is a candidate for the program. He's also, um, I would classify him as my biggest mentor as well, because we, I was diagnosed shortly after he was in 1994. And when doctors approached our parents about his diagnosis, because he was a little bit more severe than I was at that point in time, and they had told my family that he's probably not going to live an adequate or normal lifestyle. He's most likely going to be nonverbal and to not really expect him to be able to be independent. And just growing up, I've seen him surmount that obstacle. He not only speaks, he spoke for the first time when he was seven years old. He went through public school. He got his high school diploma. He did have his shadow teachers and went through IEP programs and whatnot, but he was able to get through it. And he, nowadays, he's, he's in college, he's studying to become an architect, he has his real estate license, and he's just an absolutely exceptional guy. And he's just someone that I've looked at 
that had, had a more severe autism diagnosis, but he never let that define him. And just growing up and seeing him overcome those obstacles and with the right support and the right training and the right education, he was able to get to a point where he can be independent. And that was one of the biggest drivers as to what motivated me to uh, look at my Asperger's as a strength and also create a company like Coding Autism that can provide that type of opportunity for someone else on the spectrum, whether they're high functioning or low functioning, to be able to live an adequate lifestyle and have all the opportunities that they uh, deserve to have. Now, as you guys have looked at this, maybe Austin, I'll throw this one to you, but uh, the folks on the autism spectrum, you've talked about some extra efforts that you'll give them on the soft skills side to help them succeed. It seems to me that there may be some things that are unique or at least typical of uh, people on the autism spectrum that are real strengths in the coding environment. Are you seeing that? Absolutely. I mean, there's definitely a very strong correlation on the technical side between the strengths, the, the stereotypical strengths of a lot of people on the spectrum have with those that are considered valued for a software developer, such as, you know, they tend to, they tend to thrive in, in, you know, doing, uh, they're, they're introverts. They like to be on their own and work, work on their own time. Um, they're also, you know, very, usually very meticulous with details. They're, they, they're good with repetitive tasks. And so that lends itself very nicely to coding. The difficult, the difficulties faced by a lot of people on the spectrum isn't the technical knowledge. It's being able to, it's a lot of the soft, soft communication skills, such as like in an interview, am I making eye contact with you? Um, am I recognizing your nonverbal cues, your, you know, these, these social cues that we take for granted. And so we work very hard to really focus on how to interact with other people in a company, in a team environment. Um, we have an occupational therapist on staff who's, who works with each student and makes sure that, you know, when, they, when a time, time comes for interview, they're ready to hold, them, hold themselves and be able to pass that, that stage. Uh, this is really exciting stuff, and I really wish you every success in the uh, in the uh, crowdfunding campaign. Uh, following the Start Some Good campaign, and we'll link to that in the article. So if you're watching this, uh, there should be a link associated with it that'll take you uh, to the GoodCrowd.info article wherever you're watching this, and then you can uh, link through from there in the article to the uh, Start Some Good campaign. But are you also uh, planning to do a, an equity crowdfunding campaign as well? Yeah, so we currently have a private equity campaign that's live on Crowdfunder. We've had five different investors uh, reserve investments within the company. They total around uh, 42000 um, But we have that campaign live until April 30th, and our goal with that platform is to get up to $100,000. That's great. Well, the, the combination could get you over $200,000. That's a lot of money to get things rolling. So I wish you every success with that. Now, uh, Oliver, uh, you're a remarkable guy and a lot of people look up to you. Uh, who do you look up to as a role model? Um, as I mentioned before, my biggest role model to me is my brother. He's been my older brother and I've seen him overcome a lot of obstacles being on the autism spectrum. And he's really allowed me to look at myself and say, hey, although I have Asperger's syndrome, it's not a disability to me. It's an ability. It's an opportunity for me to have a unique cognitive ability that most other people in the world don't have. And that was something that I realized later in my teens. And since then, I have just grown astronomically as a person and it's allowed me to become someone that I'm proud to be today, whether it's creating coding autism or founding my business fraternity and winning the venture competition at my university and actually getting my college degree. Uh, he's really motivated me to look at myself and say, you, the world, the sky is your limit and chase after it and don't let a disability harm you or uh, block you from getting where you want to get to. So for that reason, hands down, over any celebrity, parental figure, anything, he's my mentor. Fantastic. What about you, Austin? Who do you look up to? I would also pit, uh, go with family and say my parents are hugely influential to me. I mean, I definitely would not be doing this without their support. 
Um, I mean, they've always stood for, uh, they've always stood by their values and they are really strong figures for integri personal integrity and taking responsibility and setting example example for others. Um, I think, you know, the, I think a lot of parents would be kind of weary when their kid tells, me, tells them, hey, I'm gonna drop everything I'm doing to go start a business related to autism. Um, because I think a lot of families want their kids to do stuff that's like, you know, more stable and reliable. Um, but I'm very fortunate that I have a support system that says, go follow your dreams, take risks. This is the time to do it. And we're, we fully have your back. And, you know, I try to take that and, and support others in the same way as, as best I can. That's great. Well, uh, let me ask you each quickly, Oliver, what's your superpower? Uh, I would say my superpower is having Asperger's syndrome. It's allowed me to perceive the world in a different way than most people have. Uh, I, I look at my Asperger's syndrome as having a strength and a superpower, like being the superhero without a cape. Um, in our society today, a lot of people really um, look over cognitive um, abilities. Being able to look at the world in a different light and from a different perspective is a highly valued skill in our society. And that's one of our value propositions with coding autism is that you may be on the spectrum, but co your cognitive skills are there and you have an ability that most people in the world don't have. So when you're looking at an innovation standpoint within a company, you want different thinkers. Like it's all about having different mentalities, and different ways of perceiving life. And I firmly believe that people on the spectrum have a unique advantage in that way that they can really drive an organization or whatever they're involved with to reach their highest potential by providing a different point of view. Yeah, that's great. Austin, what's your superpower? Well, one of my superpowers is knowledge processing. I learned through starting, uh, starting my own company is that you have to wear a lot of different hats and perform in a lot of roles that you don't necessarily have experience with. Like one day you're doing PR, the next day you're doing finance, the next day I'm coding the website. So I think that, you know, bec because of my passion for what we're doing, I'm, I'm forcing myself to rise to the occasion and to take care of all the things we need to do, otherwise we won't succeed. And so I definitely consider that a, 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 a superpower for sure. That's great. Well, I, I want to thank both of you for taking the time to be on the show today. We're excited about what you're doing and wish you every success there. Before you go, tell people how they can learn more about coding autism, how they can find your crowdfunding campaigns, and how you can how they can connect with you personally. Perfect. So our website is codingautism.com. If you go on our uh, website, you can uh, learn about our campaign. You can look at our services. We're always actively looking to partner with different technology companies that are looking to hire adults on the autism spectrum. Our campaign is live on startsomegood.com. If you look up coding autism, training adults with autism in code, you will find our campaign page live. It's live until April 30th. Uh, if you wanted to contact me personally, you can email me at oliver.thornton, T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N, at codingautism.com. And I can be reached at Austin, A-U-S-T-E-N, I have a unique spelling, dot Weinhart, W-E-I-N-H-A-R-T, at codingautism.com. Great. Well, thank you both for taking the time to be with us today. We wish you at every success with your crowd financial campaign. services and social thank services. Thank you for having us. Global impact. All righty. GGI uses new market infrastructure to facilitate investments in organizations that deliver a societal, environmental, and or a cause-related benefit in addition to a financial return. Seed Equity Ventures is a registered broker-dealer with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and a member of both FINRA and SIPC, providing investment banking services to startups globally. Seed Equity's mission is to find the best and brightest entrepreneurs and connect them with global investors. Clean Energy Advisors creates investment opportunities in the renewable energy sector that provide clients with a predictable income, preservation of capital, and positive impact. Clean Energy Advisors is committed to providing clients with investment opportunities with both market rates of return and measurable impact. Thank you for listening. This podcast was recorded via Google Hangouts on Air and is available at youtube.com 
forward slash Devonthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other change maker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devin is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com. Learn more about Devon's work at yourmarkontheworld.com.